Hi, how are you? So today we are making chicken chorizo paella. My idea was to make the most simple uh, recipe uh, with ingredients that everyone has at home. So first of all about ingredients. Um, I cook for four people and uh, important, don't overload your paella with uh, your chicken, your chorizo or whatever else you are going to use. So first of all about proteins. Um, chicken, better to take uh, not breast but thighs and here I'm going to use wings. So all this, all of this only, so I, uh, I'm going to use for um, four people, yeah? So you see wings, yeah, so just uh, one part of wing, then uh, this other part of wing, and then uh, just to show that thigh as well as possible, I took one thigh and cut it, so it was, so these two pieces, it was one thigh, and cut it like lengthwise. Yeah, so chicken, um, then chicken, nice to do it a little bit before, so uh, I will marinate it and I will go right away, but nice to have it marinated at least like one hour, one hour and a half. So I will mix in this uh, oil, so Spanish uh, paprika, yeah, I mean, don't do smoked, sweet smoked paprika. If you like spicy, you can take spicy. So about one teaspoon, maybe one and a half. So I will put one. So one teaspoon of paprika. Then extra virgin olive oil. I will do maybe, let's say, one, two tablespoons. Then garlic. I cleaned two glass of garlic. Yeah, and I will not chop it. I will use just, uh, I will make just one cut. Like here, so for example, like in two parts. Yes, yeah, so to uh, make it easier, cross crosswise better because in that way garlic release just easier. So garlic, then uh, salt, pepper, as uh, much as you like. You know, you can put more if you prefer salt seafood. Then give it a little dance. Yeah, and here you are going to massage your chicken and leave it for a while. I uh, usually do it with hands. So all my chicken goes here. And uh, here I'll just move it around. Yeah, looks like this. You see? Yeah, yeah that's it. The chicken, we have it. Then, uh, so another my protein is going to be chorizo. Chorizo, I have it. So this is my chorizo. Only this amount of chorizo I'm going to use. And uh, my chorizo was like that. Yeah. So this is our Spanish chorizo. Um, if you, it was sweet. You can use spicy if you like. If your chorizo not cooked, I mean if it's not a raw, it's still fine. If you don't have chorizo, so take another sausage. But not a lot, yeah? And make sure that your sausage not too much fat. Yes, for chorizo. Then in terms of vegetables. So this was, uh, this how looked all my, all my vegetables that I'm going to use for four people. So flat beans, but if you don't have beans, you can even uh, skip it, yeah? So beans, but no more. Then uh, it was uh, half pepper. I diced it. I, I I made like like long pieces, but you can dice it if you want. And then two cloves of garlic, yeah. And um, then to make it simple, so you can use it with fresh tomato. To make it simple, again, uh, saying again that I'm going to show you the simplest way to make paella. So canned tomato. Yes, here is whole tomato, and I'm going to use just two of them, which looks like this. Yeah, so that's it. Nothing else. Uh, rice, obviously. Um, amount of rice in stock, uh, I will leave in the recipe description. But uh, approximately uh, for one person, we are using about 800 grams of rice. Uh, no, sorry, 80, 80 grams uh, per person. So I know you don't know grams. It's uh, uh, mostly for my American audience and uh, showing you serving for for two servings so with this what 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 how much rice I'm going to use each of these uh, glasses is uh, two person servings 
So all of this for four people of the game. Yeah? And uh, multiply it to four. This will be your amount of stock. You can buy your stock, you can cook your stock, so up to you. Better stock, better pay. Yes, yeah, so this is all, all our ingredients that we're going to start. First of all, about pan, you know, my pan is quite big, yeah? You see, and uh, here I'm going to cook just for four people. So paella is going to be really slim just on the bottom. And it's nice, it's better to do it like this. Uh, texture of rice coming out uh, better, you don't need to stir, you can, and it's easier. If you don't have that big pan, but you still want to feed four people, like, like me, so you can uh, even, so, cook two paellas, so take a regular skillet, like something like about 12 inch uh, bottom size, and to cook two paellas. And you will do the same thing that I'm doing here, but you will just do, do it in two pans, that's it. Yeah, then here I have, uh, this is paella, paellero, paella stove, but obviously you can do it with <laughs> something else, like your stove, your, by the way, barbecue could be nice. Yeah, so let's, let's start. So pan, at the moment it's cold. I'm going to get ready uh, seasoned pan with garlic, so clump of garlic. I, I showed it a million times in my other videos, so I'll cut it crosswise. I'm not going to peel it, I'll just cut it into parts. And I'll wrap the bottom, so with this side of garlic, I'll wrap the bottom of the pan. Just get some garlic juice here. Yeah, then later I will use garlic again. It just to start. Yeah, so that's enough. Then um, again, um, pan is cold. You see, just show that it's cold. And by the way, I, if it's possible to do it, if you have similar stuff like mine or in any other way. So you see, I have. Uh, several rings of uh, that uh, I will use uh, later all of them but from the beginning I will use just this small one yeah so fire will be just here and uh, I'm going to make like half of my recipe more than the center of the pan if your pan is just small so do like normal so use normal regular burner and do like like always but if you have big one so heat on the center so oil I will use extra virgin olive oil our Spanish extra virgin olive oil. And um, so remember, extra virgin olive oil doesn't like high heat, so that's why you don't heat it too much, yeah? So pour in oil, well, it's like generous portion. Still pan is cold, more or less like this. And now I'm going to turn on this central burner on uh, kind of medium heat. Not heating it much, you can actually go Right away, we are going to start with our chicken. This one to get too dirty. I will get ready to put it, put it. And so I, I want my chicken a little brown, a little crispy. So that's why I will put it here in the center. I'll try to have some distance between pieces and I will just leave it. And by the way, the garlic that we use to marinate chicken, I'm not going to use it because garlic is so easy to burn and um, you don't, so it's disgusting burnt garlic, it goes bitter, so you don't want it. So chicken goes in and then let's, let's just leave it for a uh, couple of minutes, not touching it. So let's give it time to get slightly brown. It's already about five minutes on uh, medium heat, so, and I didn't touch it, and uh, now I'm going to keep it over. Nice to down. If it starts a little bit at the bottom, so don't worry, it's even better. But keep it medium, not high, so And uh, about three minutes more, not touching the wind. So uh, our chicken already on medium heat about uh, eight minutes, so five minutes first side, then about ten minutes another side, and uh, I'm going now to start to add my uh, other ingredients. So my second cutting is the chorizo. Chorizo is pre-cooked, so I'm not going to cook it that long. I need some room in the center. You see, heat is in the center, that's why I will move my chicken to the side. You see, in the center, I will put my chorizo. If your chorizo is raw, 
you will keep it in the center a little longer. But as our cheese is cooked, we want to stay, to keep it here about maybe one minute, one minute and a half, just to get some nice flavor, nice cheese flavor in that uh, moisture, that uh, oil that already has uh, our chicken flavor, right? So cheese, uh, you can sweep it a little bit over. And, uh, it's already enough. You know? For sure, it's done really quick. Again, and again, if it's raw, you will keep it longer. Yeah, so, Charissa, I will push to this side and very soon I will take you out. But now I'm going to raise to add some my beans. Again, in the center. Again, to have, not like mountain, to have some distance between each bean. And you see, again, and again, it's not a lot. When you calculate the ingredients, you can think about how many pieces of chicken, how many pieces of chorizo, how many, I don't know, slices of uh, bell pepper and uh, beans will eat each, each of you. And then think about it as well, you're going to eat rice. So you will get approximate number of uh, amount of ingredients you will want. Chorizo goes out because chorizo is pure, same again, ready to eat, so we don't want to have it too dry over cooking. But chicken was raw, and we will leave chicken here forever. So beans, again, same strategy. Medium heat, one side, let's wait, one few minutes, let's make uh, our uh, beans even slightly brown. Yeah, and then we will uh, flip it over. Depends on how thick is your beans, how young is your beans. Maybe it can take for you uh, one minute, one each side, maybe two minutes each side. You see, it's already kind of half cooked. So at the moment, I just to when it is so cold. You see, I don't know if it was hot to see. So I will bring it over. This, this will stay fire forever. We are not going to take them out. But now we are going to add our next vegetable, so bell pepper. Nice to use red bell pepper. Red, uh, red bell pepper is sweet, uh, but if you don't have to, you can use yellow or green, but red bell pepper is that. Yeah? So let's make some room in the center and let's put our pepper. The pepper change thinking. So don't move it a lot. Give it some time to get slightly, slightly, uh, get this nice, tight texture. Get like the brown, maybe uh, slightly crispy, yeah, so terrible. And like this, we will stay again one minute, then we'll put the bubble. So while bubble paper is here, at the same time, I can like, control my feet, but not really necessary. Just because I have here, of nothing to do. Again, let's wait one minute. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, all, all our vegetables are uh, about five, seven minutes here frying. So uh, beans, let's say about seven minutes. You see they're getting slightly brown. Bell pepper about five minutes. And uh, we are going to move on to the next step. So we're going to make the frita, the simple paprika. So at the moment, our pan is quite hot. Yeah, so you can do it all this next step on the low heat, but I recommend you, especially if you're doing this first time, so good, like turn it off. Yeah, and warmness from the pan will be enough. So I'm going to turn it off. So now no heat, and I'm making some room in the center. So I'm moving again all my ingredients to the side, and in the center, I'm going to add uh, garlic. Here I chopped two cloves of garlic, and you see I didn't use uh, garlic press. I chopped it, and the piece is not that small because you don't want to burn your garlic, right? So no heat again. So I'm adding garlic, and uh, garlic here you are moving all the time, right? Right, left, right, left. 
and uh, warmness from the pan will be enough to get some garlic flavor. It smells already really nice. And literally 20 seconds, you move your garlic. I will change spoon. You I like to use tablespoon. You move your garlic to the edge of the pan, trying to remove it from the heat and uh, save garlic from burning. Even if you have like less room than me, you can like take garlic and put it above your uh, vegetables, yeah, to have it protected. So garlic to the side, yeah. Then next uh, step, uh, tomato. So I again uh, making it simple. So I'm using canned tomato. I think I told you already about this. So just canned tomato uh, usually has kind of like tomato and kind of liquid. So assume tomato juice. And this juice you don't want, yeah? So you're going just to take uh, whole tomato, if it's whole tomato or just tomato flesh. You see, I'm going to use these two tomatoes. You see, no juice here. So I will put all this the tomato. You can cut it before, but I just wanted to show you how, how many tomatoes. So I will uh, just uh, crush it here. So I'm going to just symbol this with fork just to mash it yeah of course you can do it with fresh tomato but in that case you will take again about two small size tomato and you will uh, boil it about five minutes to get it softer and you will peel it it's also my tomato didn't have any skin yeah even if you see that your tomato has a thick hard core you can like scoop it out yes the tomato already here I want to make it more or less even, uh, make it look like tomato paste. So again, uh, showing again, sweet smoked paprika, generous teaspoon, maybe one and a half. Really recommend you to have Spanish paprika at home, not only to buy it for everything. Then you're going to mash it until you will see that it looks even, looks like tomato paste zero heat or very very low yes you mash it it's really important to get even texture but because what is going to happen so you see we are creating flavor bases and uh, later we will add rice and rice will absorb all that moisture and all this our tomato paste with paprika that we are making and if you stay with some tomato pieces you see rice will not be able to absorb it yeah and uh, is bad yeah so we want rice to get all this flavor yeah so warmness of the pan enough to cook a little bit our uh, tomato uh, together with our paprika it smells really really nice already here and now so next step we are going to add our rice so we have our really nice flavor basis and we are adding rice Again, for four people, it's one and a half uh, cups. Yeah, so rice, I'm using Spanish rice, name is Bomba. You can buy the rice in Amazon. But if not, so I know that uh, arborio rice, Italian rice, uh, grows as well in uh, California and uh, it's available in American shops or any short grain rice. Yes, you mix it. You see rice absorbing all that moisture. So you see, at the moment, our rice already uh, flavorful, but it's still raw. So next up, we are going to start to cook it. I'm going to go back to uh, low heat, and I will start to add stock. And uh, while I'm adding stock. I will toast rice just a little bit, but on low heat. Here, really convenient to distribute uh, before to add stock, distribute all of your rice uh, evenly on the bottom of your pan. It looks like almost uh, no rice, but believe me, rice uh, will get bigger will expand at least three times. Yeah, so we can look in some composition because after it's in stock, we are not going to touch it much. Yeah, so like that, 
So uh, at the moment, low heat. Um, stock, I use stock. This is how it looks my stock. You again, nice to cook it, but if not, so you can buy it in the supermarket. So stock. One size of rice, four size of stock for that big pan. If your pan is smaller than mine, you will have to use, uh, you will use less stock. As well, nice to have some, some stock just in case if it feels like you need some liquid. So this, this tiny amount of stock, I will leave it. You see, I hope you all can see it. You will leave it for, for just in case, yeah? But here we go. And now I'm going to increase heat to maximum. So my, as, as, first of all, uh, I will turn, I'm turning, I have already on another uh, burner. So high heat everywhere on all bottom of your pan. So high stock, I, uh, now I'm going to distribute my ingredients, how I want to have it in the uh, paella. So let's add some chili so. If you don't like how it looks, the uh, location of your chicken or your vegetables, you can move it right now. So have rice even everywhere. When pan is big, it's always, in some side, this uh, layer of liquid is deeper than other side, so you can now shake a little bit the pan. But in our case, it looks like it's going to be fine. In the center of these peppers. Yeah, and, le and like this on that high heat, we are going to leave it until it will start to boil super intense and uh, then it's just boiling and you don't touch if you're again saying again that if you're so my my rice my way of pay is just just like that yeah if you're if you have the same you can just leave it alone so don't touch it until the moment you will be able to see right so right now so you can see you cannot see right through the liquid but it will start to boil uh, more and more and more and more you are on highest heat and at some point so it will be uh, reducing and at some point you will be able to see your rice yes yeah, so now at the moment we are going to wait on high heat approximately about uh, let's say eight minutes I just see that some sides a little bit dry so I smooth my stock around but I'm trying not to touch rice. At the moment I'm on low heat already uh, about one minute. High heat we had approximately eight minutes, but it's not, um, it's not just absolutely uh, precise time. You are looking at your pan and when you can see rice through the liquid, you are going to low heat. And uh, now it's time to add saffron if you have it. So my saffron looks like this, but if you don't have saffron, so don't worry. It's still going to be great. Yeah, so, saffron of course is great spice and uh, will make our paella more flavorful. But don't think that if you don't have saffron, you cannot cook paella. Of course you can. Even uh, there is an opinion that saffron works better for seafood paella. And uh, for meat paella, like, like ours, it's not necessary. But we will put it anyway. And uh, by the way, you see uh, this, this bottle that I have, it's about, uh, when it's full, it's about four grams. Four grams. It's uh, for like, for many times, I know, like for maybe, 20, 30 paellas. So just one pinch. I'm going to rub it a little bit on in my hands. So this is amount of saffron. You see that I'm going to use. Usually uh, something like um, five threads per person. Yeah, so approximately about 20 threads, but you just 
rub in a pinch. Yeah, as many um, as you can take with your two fingers. And then let's rub it. It's not because you want to break it. It's because you want to release the, some tiny juice that saffron has. And uh, this juice will go easier to our eyes. Yes, so saffron is here. Don't worry that it's just on the top. It will uh, get soft. And uh, your hands, now smell them. It smells really nice, the saffron. Yeah, so now again, on low heat, about uh, eight minutes, but don't touch it, please. You see, I never touched it. From the moment I uh, added stock and I moved a little bit my ingredients to make to make kind of composition, so I'm not going to touch rice, just because every time you touch rice, it really starch and um, makes kind of mushy texture, and you don't want it. You want your rice al dente, you want your rice stuck to the bottom, you want it a little bit crispy on the bottom, that's why uh, it's fine that it's getting stuck to the bottom. So now it's getting stuck a little bit for the bottom, but uh, we are on low heat, so it will become toasted, it will become maybe slightly brown, but it will not get burnt because you're on low heat. Yeah, and this toasted part or bottom part has name, so Korat, and we, we love it. It's uh, one of the best parts of paella. Yes, yeah, so now just let's wait more. So at the moment we are on low heat about uh, eight minutes and uh, our paella looks like this. You see, rice uh, already really visible, uh, stuck to the bottom. And you see, you can even move it like this, and it's not, not moving, and um, yeah. So at this moment, you still have some tiny amount of liquid, maybe, yeah? But you, it's not about to wait until it's totally dry. It's about to wait until your rice is al dente, or even a little bit before al dente. So at this uh, point, when it looks more or less like we have it now, you're going to taste rice. Yeah, so you don't need like you know to drop a huge spoon to spoil all this nice picture. You need just uh, several grains of rice. So you carefully somewhere where you uh, feel you will not spoil it much. You take just a bit of rice, like you know, just like this a little. And I uh, don't have uh, a hole. It still looks nice. So you're going to taste it. So don't burn your mouth. Uh, rice feels like slightly. You might call it chewy. Rice is firm, you can bite it, but in the middle you feel something like still a little bit firm. So this is our texture. Because next step, we are going to steam it for 5-10 minutes and it will get to our al dente texture. Yeah, so you never uh, cook your rice until it's soft. So this is this is wrong, this is not for buy it. And you don't care, so if your rice is already al dente or a little bit before al dente, you don't care if you have some amount of liquid left or not. You are going to stop your heat, so like I'm going to do it right now, so I'm... Ah, by the way, if you, if you like your toasted, uh, your sokorat, this toasted bottom, you, you have it already, because your rice already stuck to the bottom. But if you want it more, uh, you can toast it even more. So heat already off, and you're going to steam it. So to steam, you need to cover your pan with something that is breathing. As we're making simple recipe, so I assume kitchen paper, you have in each kitchen. So we're going to cover it with uh, kitchen paper. But could be a towel, dish towel, could be some uh, special kitchen paper that you have available. So you're going to cover it, again, heat, is uh, zero and uh, we will cover no holes but again say no lid and we will leave it steaming for approximately so it could be 
at least five minutes if you're really hungry, but better to have it a little longer. So I would recommend medium 10 minutes, but it could be 15. Of course, you're not waiting until your pie is cold, but uh, nice uh, to have it at least 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, and then to eat. And uh, imagine what is going on now here. Now, is this pan still hot? You see it's steaming through the towel, through the kitchen towel, and um, you still have some kind of cooking there and uh, some tiny amount of liquid that was left is getting more caramelized, is getting absorbed by rice and uh, rice will take as much steam as it wants. So you remember it was uh, a little bit chewy just before al dente and now it's exactly the moment when it gets uh, al dente and uh, gets this nice texture that you will never achieve just cook it in, cooking it on uh, on like low heat. Yeah, so let's wait about like 10, 15 minutes. So 10 minutes over, we are going to open our pan. Wow, it looks even different. So my timer is exactly now right. So showing you closer. Okay, you see, you even can see it's such so slim that you can see bottom through the rice. Yeah, this is how it's supposed to be. And uh, I'm going to taste a bit. So nice to scrape this bottom part. Here we go. So and now I'm going to taste. Hmm. It's so good. This is a piece of chorizo. I love chorizo. I'm sure. There will be people that will say me that there is no chorizo in paella, but yeah, this is true. World divided in two parts. Uh, one part of the world says that chorizo is wrong in paella, and another part of the world loves chorizo in paella. So I am in the second side. Yeah, so yeah. Thank you for watching my video. Mm. Hope to see you in Barcelona.